Ryan Shawmakers from the Hawthorne Football Club. I was born in the 90s. I grew up supporting the Adelaide Crows and idolised the likes of Andrew McLeod and Mark Rusciuto. The 90s was filled with players like this. We had dominant forwards in Carey, Lockett and Dunstall and tough on ballers like Diesel Williams and Robert Harvey. Let's have a look at what set them apart. And he's sitting on 100, 99 for Tony. As Lockett goes for 100. He kicked the 100 in 1987. Drop punt, familiar sight, kicks it superbly. Straight through the middle. And the big fella, the plugger, makes it 100 goals in 1991. This is for number 13. From 30 metres. There is number 13. Mark to low, bit of big. Now it's Craven. Lockett again with a chance. Up he goes. Oh, strong mark, Tony Lockett. This is Nicky Winmar, the long bomb. Oh, danger here because Lockett is there. Oh, look at that for a mark. Here's Lockett as he held. Umpire calls play on, but he's got it. Tony Lockett. Oh, what can this man do? He is brilliant. Gets back onto his left foot, kicks in towards half foot. Gather by outlet. Magnificent. Lockett. Ferris last year punches the ball for Lockett. <laughs> There's 22 seconds left. The kick towards Look it. Out. Lockett's going to be mad. Lockett's got it. 50 metres from goal. If he kicks a point, the Swans are into the grand final. <laughs> the time is ticking down. Lockett can go all the way, and all he has to do is kick a score. It'll be after the siren, the kick. They're all heading down there. Will you back? the distance, Jared. Absolutely. Directly well, the siren is going. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The scene is set. You couldn't get it any better than this. I don't think anybody's heard the siren. No one has moved in the crowd. What a finish. Any score. Otherwise, we play extra time. Lock it. The most important kick of his career. Any score will his foot to the ball doesn't go very far Hudson's foot hasn't had a touch yet Platten kicked Good towards kick. full forward one on one Dunstall well done McGrath but Dunstall's got it again he may kick his third a kick across his shoulder is magnificent football there's not much McGrath can do about that now where's Dunstall he's going to look for him there he is Dunstall oh great mark brilliant mark for Ben Allen Marks just outside 50, plays on, over the head of Strooper, long bomb into the goal square, one-on-one -on -one duel. Oh, that's all! Hudson, inside 50. Short kick, Anderson couldn't take it. Gowers has it only for a moment. Lawrence almost spooned it out to Dunstall, and there's another one! Oh. Now, down to Dunstall again. Little too far, over the top. His recovery's good, and he pops through yet another! Oh, can you believe this? The lead is on. There he is. And will we be seeing another AFL player kick a thousand goals because the Hawthorne champ has marked 45 metres from goal, Bernie? Yeah, there's the uh, play lead up to it. Crawford, brilliant last week. One of the better Hawthorne players in that loss against Essendon. Delivering the ball beautifully to Jason Dunstall. Three, and uh, three players have kicked over a thousand goals. Is this the fourth? The Hawthorne champ from 45 metres kicks. There it is. Magnificent performance. Uh, Taylor. Taylor plays on. Player in the centre of the ground all on his own is Graham. Graham goes to the full forward. You can't beat that. Yeah, very, tough. Back. very tough to stop that, Robbo, isn't it? No chance for Mick Martin. You start, set, start side by side with Dunstall. The moment he takes off and the kick comes to him like that, no chance. Stand by for the charge if he gets it. It's looking like the charge of the light brigade here. They're coming from everywhere. 
Well, good vision by Graham to give Dunstall a chance to kick his 100th goal. And it's straight through the centre. Well done, Dunstall. And here they come. Three goals to Jason Dunstall. The Simpson, Witten and Coleman medalist. One of only three players to kick 1,000 goals. And this is his fifth 100-goal season. He's topped the goal kicking at Hawthorne eight times. Won four best and fairest. 100 goals, 46 behind this year. He's always polled well in the brown line. Across to Hedy. A delicate little chip to the run of Matera. Suddenly the Eagles are alive. Matera sets sail for home. And the Eagles hit the front. Five oh, behinds. The Eagles 3-2. The Cats as Barnes wins it but straight to the run of Matera from 55. He sets sail for home with a mighty kick. What a goal. He's one of the players of the year. Taps it down, Wars fold. Matera comes through the pack. A great, oh, great effort, Peter Matera. That is class. Goal. Look out, Leach. Twists out of trouble. Look out, Matera will get to. Yes. Inside the 50, they're coming again. Engerson defiantly. Matera, brilliant pickup. Gets through the traffic. This deserves a goal. And he's got it. Magical goal. But Matador. Chance for Simmons. Does well under pressure. Kicks the ball back to the square. Wilson just off the interchange bench. Here he comes. Matera paddles the ball along in front. Kick a goal. Will it bounce through? Sensational play, Peter Matera. Mansfield and Merriman at the bottom. Evans over the top. Matera somehow gets out of Dale. Peter Matera, 52 metres. Pulls it back. What a magnificent kick for goal. Oh, he can fire them up. Kelly short kick. Matera onto it. So it just seems to be able to read everything, Peter Matera. Look at this. BOG. Thank you very much. Oh. Ah. Bounce 40 metres from the Carlton goal. Kernahan. Williams. Watch this. It could be a free kick anyway. I don't think he's got to kick the goal. I think it's a goal. It is. Oh, Dyson is shocking kick. He's normally a good kick. Oh, look at Williams. That was brilliant. Where's Kernahan? He's going to have a shot himself. On the left boot. Oh, was it touched? I don't think so. I think that's a goal. Yes. Excellent pass to Williams, the centre half forward. Supporters will kick from directly in front. Looking for Carlton's 10th. Doesn't make a mistake. And here goes Williams through half forward. 200 gamer from 46 metres. There's another one. Oh, the Blues running hot. And off he goes. The Carlton champion in the world's half forward. To the Phoenix. To the pocket. And Grant leads and marks. Getting his chance because of Adrian Campbell's injury last week. On the boundary line, 40 metres out. His second kick in league football. He's pretty good. Great goal. He, he a banana or will he run out the left foot? This is where Hudson was last week. Is that the same spot? 36th position. Oh, he kicked the goal to bring him back into the game. Got it's a goal. Goal. Roberts, big punch from behind. Gathered now by Southern. He's caught. Gets the handball away for Grant. Grant still got it. Somehow got his foot to it. Look at this! Goal of the day! Jamie Turner, who applies the tackle, scooped onto Harvey. Harvey into goal. He's chipped it short. Will it bounce through? It does. Full point. Yes, a few of their big names are down so far. Everett just starting to get into it in the second quarter. He's in the land of the missing in the first quarter, but Harvey was like, oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant play. Any word you like. I couldn't oh. find one, but that's superb. Well done. He is sensational, isn't he? I was groping for about three words there. Kick to centre half forward, Frawley or Morris, and Frawley marks. Robert Harvey on the run. Around McGrath he goes. From 50 metres, great goal. Call to play on now. 
Goes with a left foot in towards full foot. Oh. Smashed out. Here is the Norm Smith medalist. That's wow. the way you do it. <laughs> but how did it work? Brings the handball back on board to Schofield. He steps around as well. Through the slide and chase from behind McLeod. Just wonderful football, Andy McLeod. Jones, Kurt, comes unstuck. Oh, McLeod into automatic pilots. The kick by Clarkson. Carey, look out. What a mark. What a mark. What a player. Away to Scholl. Scholl was in that action two or three times. To half forward. Oh. Terrific <laughs> Great grab. Roberts again. Geez, had a fabulous game. Centering kick. Carey. Just plucked it. Renashenko. McKern and a high ball. Back to half forward. Crocker sets him. Oh, oh great mark. Carey. Great mark. I was going to say Crocker set him so that Carey came from the heavens. Taken by Carey. Anderson wrong footed. Carey pulls it back. Oh, that's a magnificent goal. Punched away by Allison. Taken by Blakey. Good kick to the front of the square. Carey off the ground. I think he's kicked the goal. Forward of centre. He kicks up towards the half forward line. And Carey again. Plays on. Oh, this grand player waltzes in the goal. And that is a best on ground performance. Inside the centre square. Goes looking for Longmire. It runs free behind. Carey robes the pack. 12 metres out goal really wasn't all that uh, good a selection. It's kicked forward again for North Melbourne, coming from Simpson. Oh, Carey! What a magnificent mark! An awkward bounce for Allison. Carey onto the loose ball. 50 out. Bacon gold square. It's through. Opportunity for Freeborn. Freeborn inside the 50. Hutchton missed it behind Carey. Throws it on the boot. It bounces. Oh. It's good. That's a lifter. The decade began with the Victorian Football League becoming the Australian Football League. Collie wobbles were dispelled and an Irishman took out the Brownlow. The Premiership Cup headed out west, leaving Victoria for the first time and three more interstate clubs entered the fray. It was the time of the Baby Bombers, a dominant North Melbourne outfit and the Adelaide Crows went back to back. Up in Sydney, farm animals roamed the field and Tony Lockett etched his name in the record books, perhaps forever. Let's now relive these 90s magic moments. Precious seconds ticked away. The longer he holds the ball. Two and a half minutes left. Monkhurst from 40 metres out. The kick looks pretty good. Up go the fans. It's another goal. Well, as I mentioned, that's his third goal. Damien Monkhurst. Most improved player last year. You can see there Lee Matthews coming down. He realises the team have won. Smile on his face. Darren Mullane can still speed down the flank. And he marks with a broken thumb. He will feel no pain tonight. From the back pocket. This will be probably the last kick. He need not even kick it. The draft is over. 52 years. They've waited. Let the celebrations begin. McAllister and Lee Matthews. Tony Shaw. He's seen his brother play and lose grand finals. And now he is the champion. Let's... There it is, the presentation by Dr. John Hamilton. So we declare Jim Steins from the Melbourne Football Club the winner, the 1991 Brownlow medal. And uh, Jim would like to come to the uh, presentation area. Jim with his father, Brian, has made the long trip from Ireland to be with his son tonight. And it is a very emotional scene here, as you'd expect. So Jim, if you'd like to come up and uh, join us here for the official presentation. He's everyone's favourite, both for the Brownlow medal and as a good all-round guy. Jim, congratulations from everyone.
Well, you're not going to believe this. The scoreboard here at the MCG is on fire. We started out by seeing a small flame just above the clock, and that has grown in the last 30 seconds. This scoreboard could blow up. Make no mistake about that. And isn't it ironic? The smoke-free sign could go as well. But we have potentially a very dangerous situation. There are sparks flying. Those flames are really blowing into the night now. This scoreboard could explode. They're going to have to move the crowd. As you can see, there are a crowd underneath. I think even they may be forced to evacuate. They have quickly evacuated the top level. But this is a very, very dangerous situation. There is also no way that firemen can get to that position quickly and efficiently to try and control it. The fans are cheering. There's black smoke peeling off everywhere. And believe it or not, the players are out on the ground going through their warm-up. They lead by that bare margin, 20 points, but uh, in the context, hello, we might really have a... Well, amazingly, here at Waverley, in round 10, St Kilda playing Essendon in Saturday night football, there has been some sort of power failure. Five minutes or four minutes, 47 seconds to go of the third quarter. The Bombers were leading by 20 points and the whole place is in darkness. There's now some, I guess, some safety lights pointing over the ground in front. We see the Essendon huddle with Kevin Sheedy. The St Kilda players are down with Stan Owls on the bench. And really, these are night lights, not the power of the lights. And everything just went black as we think Ryan O'Connor had a free kick or perhaps a shot at goal. So the margin's either 20, 26 points, or he might have even kicked the point, Ian Robertson. <laughs> Dear, I think it's <laughs> hilarious, actually, Malcolm. And uh, you mentioned about people taking uh, photographs, but uh, it certainly is a first as far as Waverley's concerned, although I do remember one night here in a pre-season game, I think it was, oh, actually, it might have been mid-season game, uh, when the when sprinklers it, yeah. went off. That's right, with Claremont and... <laughs> That was yes. the funniest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, one, of, one of the problems here, of course, is uh, not knowing the rule. I don't think there is a rule on this no. year. Oh, there's a pig on the ground. <laughs> there is a pig at full forward. <laughs> he won't catch him. <laughs> well, I wonder how far we've got to go back to see when time on was allowed for a pig on the ground. He's just drifting into the right full oh, pocket. Now a dash back to full forward. That was exciting. Now he's out to half forward. He's definitely got Dean Anderson's measure. Ah, oh, this is extraordinary. <laughs> Enough so. Oh, oh fine tackle. What a magnificent tackle. That's Darren Holmes. We're very close to quarter time. Plugger goes. He goes. He is. Yeah. so much to say. Bruce, you said that Kelly had loved to kick it to him. He has done that. The security are running from everywhere. Now, he played on last time from here. So I was about right to now. say, what would happen if he played on the siren <laughs> went? So he cannot improve the angle. So, for 90 years, the Collingwood Footy Club have held the record, and for 62 years, it stood at 12.99. Will he write his name in the record book forever? Come on, please. With this kick, it's going to go! Got it! Inside the 50, Steve O'Reilly comes to meet it, missed it. Ablett behind, 35 metres out of the step, kicks a goal. 1,000. History of Cadinia Park. <laughs> and the unruly mob spill onto the ground. I thought you were going to practice your 100 metre sprint call for the Olympics here, Dennis. Who were the winners? times Geelong's gone into the forward line Dennis that was the uh, one occasion when it didn't seem that Ablett had a chance of getting the ball because O'Reilly out in front Jared, and the ball looked to be bouncing kindly towards him and yet 
Ablett kicks this important goal. He's got to play on and they've got to take a mark. It's got to be Ablett or Brownlee. Oh, oh what a finish. Eight seconds left. If they catch a down, point, if he kicks a point, it'll be another tie. Oh, don't tell me. Oh. The siren's going to sound. Oh. 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 How'd you like that for pressure? <laughs> Well, his coach, Malcolm Blight, knows all about that. This is your moment, Billy. He'll go back and belt this straight through the middle. Yes, yeah, so I'd back him. Well, he's had a rock and rolling season. Down and out, and back he comes. Can he finish it off with a goal? Billy, you are king of the oh! The monkey's off the back, Billy! Billy! Oh, Billy! Look at them! Look at those Geelong players! The end of an era, the end of an age for Fitzroy. <laughs> They've been soundly defeated here by the new kids on the on the block, the Fremantle Dockers. Well, Fitzroy, they won the premiership seven times in the first 25 years. Their eighth and last was in 1944. So they'll go out with eight premierships and eight wooden spoons after 113 years. Where to for some of these youngsters? Brisbane will snap some of them up. Others will go in the draft. And some might be seen in the AFL again. Down at ground level, here's Dwayne Lamb. Thanks, Ruth. Macker, um, you know, it must have been hard over the last few weeks, uh, knowing that the club was coming to an end, but uh, the boys fought it out today, and won, I think they won the last quarter. Yeah, um, I think uh, we wanted to show a lot of emotion today. And we, uh, you know, we were a little bit concerned about our form last week, obviously, and we thought we may have uh, not been able to handle that sort of final sort of feeling, but uh, we thought we might have overcame it this week, but I guess not. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of emotion, I suppose, over the next couple of days. End of an era, and, uh, you know, a lot of blokes will be sort of wondering what's going on for next year. Yes, uh, a lot of blokes. I think that's probably uh, hasn't helped our cause for the last, you know, four or five weeks in that uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's uh, a lot of other things happening around us, and it's been very hard to focus on just football, you know. And the crowd to a man who stayed here, and a moment ago, the Fremantle players stood back and ushered off the Fitzroy players in their last game. And I can promise you that some of these hardened professionals who've been around league football for more than a decade has had tears streaming down their cheeks as they left. Some of the older ones and some of the younger ones. There's Alan McConnell. What a task he had. Two short stints at the end of last year and this year to coach the Lions. And there's Jeff Hogg in his last game of football. Brad Boyd, the skipper. And what emotion has been shown here in Fitzroy's last game of football. Hang on, hang on. I'm talking to the pro mergers here because we're talking as we, OK? Not talking about I against us. There's Melbourne. It used to be pale blue. They changed it to navy blue. Just have a look at Hawthorne. Now, this is after, after and a couple of abridged versions. This is what they finally came up with. You take off, where's the brown? You take off a little bit of gold. <laughs> what have you got? A Velcro hawk and a Melbourne Guernsey. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this history-making day here at the MCG. A special welcome to all our viewers in South Australia and to the fans of Port Power, because Port Adelaide are about to play their first game for premiership points in the AFL. And what better team than to play against than Collingwood? And here comes Braden Lyle, the acting captain, leading out Port Power for their first game. Proud of the past, well may they be, but now they must look to the future. Coached by the legendary John Cale, himself a former champion player of some 264 games, four times he was the club champion, and of course a very, very successful coach with the club known as Port Adelaide in the South Australian National Football League. The Fremantle Tigers officially in the competition, up against the Tigers. There's the bounce and a beauty to Burton missed it, Dia didn't.
supporters and fans realizing now they've got the flag as Sumic takes the mark. To... Well, he uses that uh, helicopter kick and it works. They've got it. Come on, let's hear it. The Bombers. Foster's oh, AFL Premiers, 1993. to ask Dick Reynolds to present the 1994 Premiership Cup to the West Coast Eagles. Crashing through Bickley. McLeod tries to... Oh, it does it magnificently to Costa. The handball out wide. Gets to Connell. Connell inside 50. Belts it towards full forward. Jarman there. With him was Zilla. Jarman again. Round the body. That'll do. Oh, that will do. Oh, unbelievable, Darren. He has played a game and a half. And they are home. So there's nothing left now to celebrate. Next up on your ultimate AFL experience, we enter the 2000s, a decade that delivered on every level. 